Hello, this is Todd from TT Bike Fit, and today we're going to talk about, not about bike fit, but about running style and running technique in Ironman and Marathon. And all the hours I've spent out on the Queen K filming the athletes running, it's become clear to me that there are really two distinct running techniques that we see out there, and that, at least among the women, that we see runners who use both techniques at the top of the sport, putting down some of the fastest marathon times that have been seen in Ironman. So we can start off looking at Marinda Carfrey here. Everyone knows she's a fantastic runner. She's done a 252 in Kona, has the fastest overall time run split recorded in Kona, and really she is a classic runner. Her style is the style that you know everyone talks about, everyone tries to emulate. Um, if you look at the elite marathoners um, from Kenya, you'll see that this is basically the style that they use. So what we notice about this style is that there is a good bit of vertical movement and a good deal of flight. So from the toe off period through the landing, there's quite a bit of travel through the air. Of course, this amount of vertical travel, this amount of vertical displacement requires at the same time absorbing the impact from the landing from that relatively high altitude. The advantage of this running style is that the runner takes full advantage of the time in the air to increase the distance per stride. This is in fact something that becomes absolutely necessary at certain run speeds. This is why you will see the elite runners always running with this style because for them to move at five minute per mile or faster paces, the only way it's possible to do that is to fly a uh, certain distance per each stride. So I like to call these runners, these classic runners the gazelles because they do their style does mimic that of a gazelle when they run in that there's just a lot of flight and a lot of resilience and a lot of bounce and this somewhat flies in the face of you, know, you often hear in general you know general running technique advice which you see everywhere and there's plenty of people um, spewing it out these days and that well you know you shouldn't try to go up and down much well clearly uh, there's a good bit a vertical travel in runners like this. In fact, it's absolutely necessary when we talk about the physics of running, it's absolutely necessary to get some vertical movement and some vertical velocity for the runner to travel this far in the air to cover this much ground while airborne. Now, so what about the other running style? Well, I call these runners gliders and you'll see that these runners have more of a skating motion and Chrissy Wellington is certainly one who has also run a 252 in Kona but practices this this technique so as opposed to the gazelle type of running style which we just saw Marinda Carfrey exhibit, exhibit the gliders have a higher cadence style much less vertical displacement in much less flight time. So you'll notice that her feet are never very far from the ground. If you watch her lead foot, it's very close to the ground, only a few inches off, and the foot is well out in front of the center of mass at takeoff. This is quite different from what we see with the gazelles where the takeoff typically occurs with the foot back here under the center of mass. So we'll compare these side by side here in a second. If we look at the cadence, just compare these two runners, even though they're both running approximately a 252 marathon, uh, Chrissy's cadence is around 
96, 97, and Marinda's is closer to 90. That's because she spends more time in the air. So if we put the videos side by side, actually that's Kate Snow right there, so let's uh, switch, let's switch over to uh, Rinnie. Okay, so here we have Rinnie and Chrissy, and they're both, in each case, about to leave the ground with their trailing foot. Notice the foot more under the center of mass here with the gazelle style, but the more open stride, as opposed to the 90 degree angle, the more obtuse angle here in the lead leg. So if we start these videos playing, we can see she's the difference in the uh, strides. The faster cadence here with Chrissy and the reduced flight time. The fastest run split this year was Sonia Tazic from Germany. And she's a classic glider. She was the only woman to go under three hours this year under tough conditions. Once again, we can see she exhibits the classic traits of this type of running style. Feet hardly leave the ground, very little flight time, and a very open stance at the moment of toe-off. Very little vertical displacement as well, and a relatively high cadence in the mid to high 90s. Once again, we look at it from behind. Foot barely off the ground, lead foot. Time of toe off, lead foot well out in front of the center of mass. Very open stance. Gina Crawford from this year at Kona, another glider. You will note that a lot of these glider runners are smaller stature runners with shorter legs. Although Chrissy doesn't fall into that category at all. And in fact, Leanne Cave exhibits this style as well. And certainly she doesn't. So we really do see quite a few top female Ironman runners using this style. Cadence, mid to high 90s. Very little vertical movement. Very open stance at toe off. Feet very close to the ground. Of course, the best male runner this year and the winner at Kona was Pete Jacobs. And we see fewer men, for sure, exhibiting this gliding type of running style. The uh, most of the better men runners tend to show the gazelle type style, which we see Pete Jacobs here exhibiting similar to Marinda's style in that at toe off, we see the front foot under the center of mass. We see the 90 degree bend in the front leg leading with the knee as opposed to leading with the foot and a good amount of flight and vertical oscillation with each stride. And we have some even extreme examples from this year. Ferris Al Sultan, clearly a gazelle kind of runner. Huge amount of flight between each stride. But sort of shattering some of the uh, assumptions about cadence. Ferris ran well under three hours here, but was barely running at an 80 cadence. And largely that had to do with the amount of time he spent in the air on each stride. Now there was at least one man in the uh, top pros who was exhibiting the gliding running style, Jeremy Jerkowitz. Ran a 2.56, which was pretty competitive this year. 
and much like the other gliders we've looked at higher cadence over 90 very open stance at toe off or it's leading with the foot as opposed to leading with the knee and relatively little vertical displacement so you get the feeling watching these runners that they're just that there's almost no vertical movement at all that they're just gliding barely above the ground and while we progress right into uh, Math Ru Matthew Russell here he's the complete opposite classic gazelle style obviously he did a great run split a lot of flight time a lot of vertical oscillation and a slower cadence a sub 90 cadence more towards mid 80s now if we look at even at 70.3 uh, Kate Snow has shown herself to be one of the uh, better long course runners out there for sure having pulled off a 252 in Kona as well um, and some blistering times on 70.3 courses and she's an extreme example of glider style running once again very little vertical oscillation very open stance very open stride an extremely high turnover her cadence here is in, is in the neighborhood of 105 to 110 and she's running about a six flat per mile pace here for a, a 119 half marathon so extremely fast with very little flight and very little vertical oscillation another name I have for this style of running is skating because essentially it's almost as if the runner is skating along the road as opposed to bounding across the surface very uh, distinct comparison here if we uh, look at Kim Loeffler in the same race who also had a very fast time 122 but slightly slower and she did it with the classic gazelle style a lot of vertical oscillation a lot of flight take off with the front foot under the center of mass So we see two distinctly different run styles achieving similar results in at least long course triathlon. Is there one style that's better than the other? That's the question. Well it's clear if you're trying to be an elite world class runner and run sub five minute miles that you absolutely must run like a gazelle. These runners at the front end of the Boston Marathon clearly demonstrate that that's the style being used huge amounts of flight time here take off with the lead foot under the center of mass lots of vertical oscillation four to six inches of vertical travel these runners are flying in the neighborhood of two to three feet their center of mass is moving in the neighborhood of two to three feet through the air with each stride and it's simply um, a matter of physics that they must travel that far in the air if they have any hopes of running at the sub five minute mile speeds that they do and so we'll, we'll get into the physics of these two styles here in a second but uh, there's there's absolutely no question at all that once you get down to a certain pace and we um, hypothesize that that's somewhere you know right around the six minute pace it becomes nearly humanly impossible because of the cadence required to use a gliding running style to go much faster than six minutes per mile 
And so you get down to these styles and you certainly need to uh, run like a gazelle. So if we whip out our handy dandy spreadsheet here and look at cadence versus pace minutes per mile and then look at the distance required per each stride, uh, if you want to run a six minute mile, you need to run that close to 110 cadence that we saw Kate Snow doing um, if you're only traveling about four foot a step. And um, that's about what we find that, that these gliders are doing. And we'll get more into that in a minute. We know that race walkers, studies of the race walkers have shown that they fly, they're theoretically not allowed to fly at all, but they do fly a tiny little bit per stride. But the men go about four feet per stride and their turnover is something around 105. That limits them to around uh, 620 to a 630 pace uh, being where the, where the world record times are in race walking. When you get down in the five minute area, you know, if you want to have a, a, stri a cadence that's even reasonable, you got to be tra traveling well over five feet to six feet per stride. And the only way to do that is to travel a couple of those feet in the air. So although this isn't a scientific, scientific study by any means, we looked at um, about 15 or so of each of these types of runners and looked at their stance time versus their flight time. And the glider group had a flight time on average of about 0.1 seconds, whereas the gazelles have a flight time in the 0.16 to 0.17 seconds. So about one and a half to two times the time spent in the air that the gliders do. Their cadence of the ones we looked at actually averaged only at 88. And we find that the world class guys, the elite runners, the Josh Coxes, the the Ryan Halls, the, the Kenyan marathoners are, tend to be right at about a 90 cadence. We find with the gliders, however, a cadence in the mid to high 90s with some well over 100. The difference not being the stance time, we see the stance time in the two groups is pretty darn close, the average stance time. It has to do with the flight time uh, being much shorter with the gliders. So the average flight distance is about a little over a foot, about 15 inches with the gliders, and a little over two feet with the gazelles. And the physics, the physics of running and projectile motion uh, describes why this is so. So one of the big differences between the motion of the gliding runners and the gazelle runners is the fact that the gazelles have some vertical velocity, some upward velocity on takeoff. The path that they travel while in the air resembles that of a projectile shot up at a shallow angle. So that after their rear foot leaves the ground, they actually gain another inch or two of altitude before returning to the ground. The gliders, however, are at their highest point on toe-off and essentially fall to the ground as they are flying through the air. So they have some forward velocity, obviously, but uh, the amount of time they spend in the air is just essentially the amount of time it takes them to more or less fall from their back foot to their front foot. And simple physics reminds us that vertical and horizontal velocities are completely independent of each other. So the amount of time a runner is going to spend in the air has absolutely nothing to do with how fast he is traveling or what his pace is. It only has to do with the amount of vertical velocity on takeoff because the runner is fighting in the vertical direction, fighting the acceleration of gravity. So however much vertical velocity there is will project the runner up and then he will turn to the ground with the same velocity they left the ground as far as the vertical motion is concerned. So clearly the gazelles have more force applied in the vertical direction to give them this increased vertical velocity and this gain of altitude between each stride. The gliders are using almost no vertical force at all and are essentially traveling, you know, I show a very small VY here, there may be essentially no VY uh, and that that essentially all the force is applied in the forward direction. Uh, 
So what I'm getting at here is that the, the glider style may well be a more efficient running style, at least up to certain speeds. This vertical motion requires some amount, the vertical motion, the gazelles, requires some amount of energy expenditure and force in the Y direction, whereas there's none of that being used with the gliders. Now, the payback for this is the gliders have to have a faster turnover rate to run the same speed as the gazelles. So the question is, is that more efficient than using the extra energy required to have the projectile vertical motion here? And that's something that's uh, certainly a subject for further study. It's certainly possi possible that, the, that much of the vertical force, vertical motion, vertical velocity in the gazelles is obtained through spring action and that it's not an active muscle force contraction but it's essentially the springing back of the connective tissues. Uh, the gliders certainly aren't exhibiting that at all and um, then they don't need it and now maybe that's maybe that's what separates the gliders from the gazelles. It, it may be a physiological difference but I think um, you know when you're talking about an age grouper that there are some interesting implications here. And what I mean by that is if you're really only trying to run between seven and, minute, seven and eight minutes per mile, and certainly for just about any age grouper, um, running a seven minute pace in an Ironman would be uh, pretty outrageous. Um, for women, obviously, it puts you in the, in the pro ranks uh, for the most part, um, you know, and still would be excellent for men, and, and even down to 7.30, certainly. Uh, and so, you know, if, that's, if that would be a great result, then you really don't need to travel that far per stride if you have a reasonable turnover rate. You don't really need to fly through the air like Marinda does or like the elite marathoners do. You just need to turn over, say in the low to mid 90s, and travel about four foot per step. Now, just with some fairly big walking steps, you can travel three feet. So you need to get about a foot, a foot in the air. And that's essentially falling off of the back foot, as we talk about in the physics section, and extending that front leg, that front foot forward, getting that swing, which essentially drags your center of mass about a foot forward as you're extending out front. So I'm hypothesizing here that this gliding running style may be a better way for most age groupers who are doing long course and um, perhaps many pros, at least in the women's field, to be running. If you're not if you don't have the naturally gifted resiliency, bounce, etc., cetera, uh, that these classic beautiful gazelle runners have, well, maybe you should be focusing on gliding, working on that turnover, and um, moving from foot to foot. And perhaps you find, and I am guessing again, this is a, a topic for further study, that you will find that this type of a running style requires less energy and is a more efficient running style once you get adapted to it.